to share something uh, with you that's been heavy on my heart. About two years ago, I was um, disfellowshipped from the Jehovah's Witness uh, religion, organization, cult is what I call it now. Lifelong. That's all I ever knew. So I've kind of been floundering a little bit because I don't know where else to go. And if anybody knows about Jehovah's Witnesses, they know that once you question their doctrine, you are considered mentally diseased. And if you don't change your way of thinking back to rank and file Jehovah's Witnesses, then you have to be kicked out of the organization because you will corrupt the rest of the congregation. So because I did not change, I could not, I could not change my views because once you open Pandora's box and you see all the lies and the deceit of this organization and my heart was sincere I finally decided after being in and out of the faith for many many years I've always struggled with the beliefs it made didn't make any sense to me so when I started the catalyst for me is when my father was dying and he says, Monica, he says, make my heart glad. He says, draw close to Jehovah, draw close to his organization. That's the ark, Monica. Stay in the ark because that's your only salvation is Jehovah's organization, which is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. And I promised my dad, I said, Daddy, I am. I am. I'm going to try. I'm going to do the best I can. After my father died, it became more on my heart because I made this promise to my dad because he was so passionate about it. So I decided I'm going to keep my word to my dad because he loves me, you know. So I started going to the meetings back, getting back in the field service, um, parts of the meeting learning as much as I can trying to get back in the groove of things in Jehovah's organization excuse me guys and I started going out in field service knocking on doors and the the seasoned sister elder sister elder's wife sister um, was sort of like men, my mentor I had two of them and a couple of other sisters that really tried to help me understand. And I did not understand the whole 607 BCE 1914 thing. It did not make sense to me. So I said, if I'm going to be going door to door, knocking on people's door and telling them, trying to help them gain everlasting life, I truly needed to understand what I was trying to teach them. So I sat with the elders' wives, and they tried to help me to understand, understand this 607-1914 thing. It made no sense to me. No sense. Especially once I started doing research, and I was scared to death to do research because we were discouraged to do research because... The brothers, the governing body has always have, have did the research for you. You have no reason to go online. You're going to go, get in, in with apostate information and, you know, people against God or whatever. Only go to the organization. And I did that and I did that and I did that and it made no sense to me. So finally I decided I am going to go outside the box and I'm going to look at what historians say, what scholars say, what 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 other people's opinions were. And once I opened that, and let me tell you this first, I contemplated doing this because I was so afraid that God was going to strike me dead. 
by the keystrokes of going beyond the organization. That's crazy. That's crazy. I cried. I was scared to death. I was shaking like a leaf because I was so afraid that God was going to be mad at me because I questioned doctrine. And when I hit that key and all this information came out, I cried like a baby. I was angry. So angry. It's like the rug had been pulled from under me. Just flashed. I'm like, what? I'm not going to get into the whole, everything that I learned and whatever. You can do your own research about that. But it was an awakening for me with that particular subject. And then I started doing more of the history of Jehovah's Witnesses and I found out that Charles Taze Russell was a Mason. Today, today, if you go to his grave site, it's a prayer pyramid, a Masonic pyramid. Our founding father. Really? So anyway, that's how I started awakening. And then one day I was, that started my quest of looking for information and, you know, the validity of the Bible and, and everything. So I'm sitting one evening watching a documentary on, I think, the Discovery Channel about the Bible, fact or fiction or whatever. I, I immersed myself in, in, in learning as much as I can about the history of the times that are in the Bible and trying to, you know, piece it together. And I'm sitting there wide awake eating chips and drinking my tea um, watching this like about 7 o'clock in the afternoon, evening and then all of a sudden I had this sensation while I'm watching TV, the sensation of sinking 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 and it, my eyes are wide open and things started getting dark. I said, okay, am I having a stroke? What what is happening to me? And and it just it just kept getting darker and it was just like I was sinking, 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 sinking. And it scared me, guys. It scared me so bad. So I started calling on Jehovah's name. Because that's how I've been taught. If you're really afraid and you need your, your father, you call on his name. You call on God's name. So I started calling and the words wouldn't come out of my mouth. But from my heart, I was saying, Jehovah, help me. Please help me, Jehovah. And the more I said, Jehovah, I dropped. Jehovah, help me. And I dropped. Jehovah, please help me. And I dropped. And at this point, I'm scared to death. My eyes are wide open. I see the television. I see the lights in my room. But I still have this sensation of darkness. It was the weirdest thing. And in desperation, all of a sudden, I couldn't see the light. I couldn't see the TV anymore. I couldn't see nothing. It was black. Totally black. But I could, I could still hear the television. It was just, I can't even explain it. But then I said, Jesus, help me. And the minute I said Jesus, it was like a, the sensation of moving up just a little bit. And it was like the darkness wasn't as dark. So I said his name again, Jesus, help me. And it was lighter and lighter. And I keep say, I kept saying, Jesus, help me. Please help me. And then it was light again. And I could see the TV and I'm in my bedroom and I'm looking around what just happened to me. And then I got scared again. I said, it's the demons because Jehovah's Witnesses taught me God doesn't talk to you. He doesn't. If something that like that happens to you, it's the devil. And as soon as I thought it was the devil, it became dark again. 
And immediately I said, Jesus, please help me. And the light kept getting brighter. And then I got scared. And I'm like, this must be the devil. And, I, and then in my head, I didn't say it with my mouth, but it was in my, my head or my heart. I said, this must be the devil. And I sunk when I had that thought. And he says, Monica, I heard a voice clear as day. He says, Monica, stop doubting me. Stop doubting me. And I said, okay, Jesus, okay. And that went on for some for some time. And after it was all over with, I fell down on my knees and I prayed to Jesus. Thanking him for speaking to me, for waking me up. I don't know what all this means. I don't know what this all means. I don't know. But I know that I am on a quest. I'm listening and I'm watching because the scriptures say my sheep will hear my voice. And I truly believe I'm one of his sheep. I don't feel like I deserve to be one of his sheep. But I feel firmly in my heart that he called me. I don't know what I'm supposed to do at this point. But I'm just going to listen to his voice. I know somebody, people will look at this video and say, this woman is crazy out of her mind. Because if I was to see something like this, I'd say, well, she must be, something must be wrong with her. What was in her tea? <laughs> I think I'm a pretty level-headed person, and uh, I don't even know what this video means, but I just wanted to share this with other people who may have had a similar experience. I don't belong to any type of religion. I'm searching and I'm listening for his voice, and I will continue to. Anyway, just wanted to share that with you guys. I don't know what it means, but just wanted to share it.